going a little too far. If he's saying ban them until you have a proper vetting process, then that's every bit every bit correct. Um, it's impossible, however, for to trust our government to run the vetting process because obviously they created ISIS. Uh, if they wanted to have a lot of ISIS people come in, they would certainly let them and say that they were vetted, and uh, they're not going to. They're not going to do that. Now, relative, I have a little bit different take relative to the number of people, uh, young Muslim military age people coming in. My sources tell me uh, in interviewing a lot of these people in Europe and in the Middle East, that these are conscription age military people. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, by the, what you're wrong, there is proof that some of these people who have been jihadists are in the group. But the majority, it appears, are people running away from conscription running away from having to be forced into the military as terrorists uh, in any number of the dozen, uh, you know, jihadist groups in there. And they, they really aren't particularly religious. In fact, a lot of them are running away from Muslim uh, or from Islam. That's why they get so deeply involved in the pornography and the other corruptive things of the West once they get there. That's why they get involved with rape. These people are simply young men who don't want to fight, who don't uh, are tired of it and want, uh, you know, the, the good life uh, in, in, in the Western countries. Although they do hate the United States, everyone in the Middle East has been trained to hate the United States because of our constant intervention there. You know, everybody in the world knows about the relationship between Turkey and ISIS uh, uh, and the United States backing Turkey and, and covering for Turkey's uh, collaboration with ISIS. And that's because, obviously, Turkey's taking orders from uh, the United States in, in uh, you know, facilitating the sale of ISIS uh, oil. Uh, everybody in, in Europe and the Middle East knows about the 9-11 controversy, that it was the, a government operation from beginning to end. It's only the United States people who are continued, you know, to believe the, the official version, and that's only about 60 percent of the U.S. people believe the official version. So I think some 40 percent don't believe it, though they don't don't understand how bad it really is. It takes a lot of study, as you know, to understand the nuances of what happened in 9-11, how the U.S. pulled that off. Joel Skousen, I totally agree with what you just said, but you make the statement U.S. pulled it off. And in, in a way, that's true. But again, semantically, criminal elements and networks compartmentalized did because that's what the media does. They then say that we say the U.S. government did it. But I guess it was so high level and so widespread, you could argue either way. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah. When you look at the cover-up of 9-11, it goes to the highest levels of government. Now, that isn't to say that George W. Bush knew a lot about what was going on. I think he knew that an operation was coming down. But this is a puppet sitting at the head, isn't making the operations, wasn't making the operation, just following orders. You stay and talk to the students at this elementary school. But Dick Cheney, of course, was fully knowledgeable. Here he is sitting in the White House Situation Room, allowing the airliner coming in to attack the Pentagon. I mean, this he had to be fully 100% cognizant that this was a U.S. black operation. The young Air Force officer crying out, you know, this airplane's 10 miles out. Do the orders still stand? And he's panicking because the orders have to be, let it come in. Don't stop it. Don't shoot this airline down. And he's getting panicky. And, you know, Dick Cheney whips his head around and said, of course, the orders still stand. And, of course, uh, you know, as Glenn Greenwood pointed out, the United States just honored Cheney with a bust of his uh, head uh, in the U.S. Congressional building. This man should be tried for war crimes as well as treason against the United States. But it clearly was a government operation from beginning to end, including the hiring of the terrorists. I mean, that's why they don't show the videos of the terrorists and the passengers getting on the airplane of the hijack. They refuse to show the videos because it would show that the named hijackers weren't the ones getting on the airplane. There was another set of hijackers that they had trained in Saudi Arabia, I believe, on major airliners. Because as a pilot, I can tell you, you can't train on Cessnas and even know how to turn off the autopilot of one of those major jets. Impossible. And so there's no way that those named hijackers. So this is a cover-up from beginning in, including the covering of Saudi Arabia's in, uh, role in training pilots, as well as uh, keeping a lot of the uh, phony hijackers on the list uh, in their Joel, apartments. We're going to break, but let me ask you this quick question. Is Saudi Arabia arguably the most evil country in the world? No, we are. 
We are. I mean, they're just puppets to the United States. We are covering for them. That makes us culpable for so much of what goes on in the world, what we allow and we, you know, help Saudi Arabia. We promise to cover their their pedophilia. I mean, these people are not Muslims. They're just corrupt individuals pretending to be Muslims. I agree, sir. Stay right there. We're going to come back and get into more geopolitics with Joel Scowls in a World Affairs Brief. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars. By the way, coming up in the next segment, I'm going to play the clip again uh, from the AP speech, the speech he gave yesterday where the AP just played the clip where he said, you know, no more Muslims, period, until we vetted them. Well, they just have him saying no more Muslims, period, absolute and total ban. And they take it out of context. But I think this will only make Trump go up in the polls because I was somebody who was against the Iraq war. I was somebody who was against all this Islamophobia. I knew they were trying to destabilize the Middle East to put radicals in charge to wreck the place. I don't want to just randomly hate brown people or Muslims or Arabs. I mean, people know I've been a champion of, of not abusing these countries and these peoples. But now that they're bringing them in, now they're bringing in radicals, now that this is happening, and Joel Skousen's right, a lot of them are just guys looking for welfare and jobs and women. Still doesn't matter. They're the cover for the radicals, which will then be used to take our rights. And we've been proven that's coming. Uh, but Joel Skousen, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. So many other topics, so much more to cover. What about the question that Paul Craig Roberts asked, is war on the horizon, is it too late to stop it? What do you make of Ergun threatening to blow up Russian ships two days ago? And uh, what do you make of uh, the the uh, Turkish going into Iraq and, and Iraq saying it's an act of war and just their arrogance? Is Turkey doing this at the behest of NATO or is Turkey out of control or what's your intel? Well, NATO is not actually directing Turkey. The United States is directly uh, getting Turkey to do its bidding. Remember that the shoot down of the Russian Su-24 was at the direct uh, instigation of the United States, and I believe they wanted to do it in order to force Russia to bring in their top-of-the-line air defense system so the U.S. could eavesdrop on them and see what kind of jamming capabilities they have. S-400. Yes, the S-400, as well as uh, their air-to-air -air, uh, jamming equipment and their air-to-air -air missiles, all of which have radar signatures, which have to be eavesdropped on. The U.S. Ha hasn't had any opportunity to get that information heretofore because Russia hasn't been in combat using those and hadn't been until they shot down one of the Su-24s that forced Russia's hand. And now, now Russia's brought in its top-of-the-line fighter planes as well. That's correct. So I don't. One of the interesting things that happened uh, this week as well is the U.S. for the first time attacked the Syrian army positions. Uh, in other words, uh, this is a major yes. escalation. This is a major escalation because Russia is going to be forced, perhaps, to defend the Syrian troops against Russian air or U.S. air attacks. They may have to, uh, you know, turn on their systems. Uh, which is be enough usually to get the U.S. aircraft to turn around if you get locked on by an S-400 missile. Uh, that's, uh, you know, typically you turn tail and run. That coupled with Turkey publishing this photo of the Russian crew member supposedly holding a rocket launcher. Now, I want to say something's wrong with that. That looks like a provocation from Turkey because those ships passing through the Bosphorus are a mile to two miles away from shore. Can't see it. You can't see that. Uh, the pictures that they've showed of the Russian ships don't have that type of uh, um, structure that shows up in the picture. Um, in other words, that either was photoshopped or that was from a different uh, time or frame. I'm surprised surprised that the Russians haven't come out and uh, uh, and debunked that particular picture because it obviously is very very fraudulent or something that. Uh, you know, they picked out of some other time frame. Well, Turkey's threatened to blow up their ships already. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't aiming, but it wouldn't be shoulder-fired. What did it be a larger well, onboard missile? You're talking about a mile or two away. You don't use a shoulder-fired, uh, you know, bazooka-type, uh, you know, cannon to do that. You've got all kinds of weapons on ships to do those types of things. So this, there's something wrong with that story. Uh, either it means that the U.S. is trying to provoke additional reactions not because, and I disagree with Paul Craig Roberts, I don't think this is meant to provoke World War III. As I pointed out on Sunday on your show, the U.S. isn't going to gain anything in terms of getting the world to join a militarized global government by, by creating a, a conventional war with Russia. 
uh, it just doesn't do it. Uh, the U.S. is sitting there managing the conventional war. Everyone's sitting on the sideline cheering the U.S. on and say, yeah, go to it. But you see, the U.S. really wants to say set us up for a nuclear confrontation with Russia and China where our military gets taken down. That, and that alone, is what drives people into accepting their solution that we need a military global government to fight this war because the U.S. has been decapitated, at least our military has. So I think it's still too, uh, too premature for a third world war, but I'll tell you, the, the globalists are doing something in there to provoke, uh, you know, Russia to... Uh, Escalate tensions with with uh, Turkey now on Putin's part is very obvious. Well, stay there, stay there. Explain when we come back, but they're definitely playing with fire. This is unprecedented. We're going to come back on that front, and also global government itself. The big Paris conference. We'll talk about that. The economy, oil prices with Joel Scales and WorldAffairsBrief.com. I'm with Infowars.com. They don't want you to check these sites out, folks. Send the links out to friend and family. As I went to break, I just pointed out something that I should point out a lot more. White House run media matters. Memos got leaked five years ago where they said all independent, libertarian, patriot-based media will needs to be infiltrated and destroyed. Now, I want to explain to you separately, we have been partially infiltrated before like a movie. I mean, I get followed around home sometimes, you name it. I'm not going to get into it all, but it's like a movie. Can you imagine what it's like for other people? This is real. Okay. And you need to understand, we're having a big effect. They don't like us. I like to have lots of company in this fight. That's why I have all these other great guests on there doing just as good a job as I am or better. But you have the real power. You are why they're scared of InfoWars because we have millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of viewers and listeners. And again, when you've got billions of views on YouTube, when you've got this weekend, I shot three videos together. They had over two million, no, two and a half million views. Those were live, unedited, where instantly there's 50,000 watching within a minute. And then when by the end of the video, there's 100,000 watching. And then 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800 in one video had 1.3 million views within a day. Now, do you think the establishment likes that? No, they are scared to death because it's not a fat lady on a treadmill getting that many videos. It's not cats playing. It's not French bulldogs. It's not Jay-Z. It's Alex Jones, it's people like Joel Skousen. <sighs> Let me tell you, when we have a video, our average video gets about 50,000 views. We put out about 40 videos a day. 40, 50,000 people watching a political video is a victory. So I'm not bragging. I'm saying this, I can feel the wings of doom flapping around spiritually. I mean, I know I'm in danger. And I'm just asking for your prayers, your support, but also prayers for other people that are taking action because... They've once said there are no atheists in foxholes. I forget who said that, but let me tell you, there aren't. This stuff is real. You can see it. And as it all gets announced, as world government gets announced, as all this evil comes out in the open the next few years, what do you think is going to happen to the credibility of a World Affairs Brief, a World Net Daily, a DrudgeReport.com, an InfoWars, and the hundreds of other sites that aren't as big or effective? I wish they were. Believe me, I want to be able to have so many patriot leaders out there that they can't decapitate us all. It, it, it's like walking point in a DMZ, you know, up on the edge of a demilitarized zone with the North Koreans on the other side taking pot shots at you. I do not like being up front, but it's my duty, my job. And so I want to go 110%. I want to have the full effect. I'm not on this mission to lose. I know we can win. Look at the effect we've had. Tell your friends and family about the show. Send them the free podcast link, the live audio video link at Infowars.com forward slash show. Download the free iPhone and Droid apps. Get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. You can get a couple months free right now when you sign up for a year. It's $5.95 a month. 20 people can use it. Give it to friends and family. Buy a T-shirt. Buy a book. Buy some nutraceuticals. They're all the very best we could come up with. I mean, they're knock your socks off, folks. Just because <laughs> people think it's special to put something really good out. And only an idiot would not put something really good out. You want to dominate a market, but plus I am a good guy. The point is, is that we are accelerating at a rapid pace. Our numbers, I mean, we have doubled the audience in the last year conservatively. In fact, it's way more than that. It scares me, quite frankly. It's like being strapped to a rocket. And that's because evil's rising. Whatever's opposing it is going to rise as well. It's time for you to rise.
and I know all of you don't see yourselves as leaders, then pass the info on. But if you do have a burning desire to take action, get involved. Start a show. Go on Access TV. Go speak at city council. Get involved is all I'm saying. Because this is the season to get involved, folks. This is the beginning of some wild times in the next decade. Briefly, then I'm going back to our guest. We have Deep Cleanse first sale ever. It's got Shilogy, it's got zeolites, and a bunch of other things known to detoxify and pull garbage out of the body. Uh, it's got five-star reviews at InfoWarsStore.com. If we could keep this in stock, it would be our number one bestseller. It's a real sleeper, though. I never really promoted it, and it's the hottest item we've got because it turns out that the vitamin and mineral nerds, I mean that nicely, the experts just salivate over this formula. It's such a game changer. It's proprietary. Group only developed this for us. So InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. It'll probably sell out in the next few weeks. Uh, we have, again, dozens of other great products. We have free shipping through the 18th. And we got a lot of new items, survival items, preparedness items we've added uh, the, today to InfoWarsStore.com as well. If you've got any questions, give us a call, 888-253-3139. And again, I want to thank you all for your support, your prayers, and more. Uh, Joel Skousen, thanks for coming on while I rant. I want to finish up on the unprecedented nature uh, of the provocations by the West I wanted to then move into more on Trump briefly and then back into other issues. But uh, speaking specifically about the liberty movement, uh, I don't actually see how the establishment, I, I guess they'll just demonize us, but I mean, the liberty movement is becoming the cause celeb, super popular, super hot across the board worldwide. I don't see how the globalists, the Anglo-American establishment can continue to execute their operations if our growth curve is this fast I think that's why they're announcing censorship and other algorithms to begin next year. Can you elaborate on that or agree or disagree? Well, I agree that they're they're beefing up on a lot of fronts. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to, to, to do that, however. Uh, I think there's a difference between throwing the ideas out there, prepping the public, uh, maybe perhaps getting a little more uh, acceptance of them, but they can't even get... I mean, despite the New York Times coming out for gun control, Huffington Post coming out for absolute confiscation of all guns, it's not going to happen. There's just too much opposition uh, to it right now. Uh, but the pressure is building so that when they have a big enough crisis, and God only knows they're going to throw a continual mass shooting at us one day after or one week after another, it seems, until they get something. But uh, uh, politicians know they're going to get unelected if they do another assault weapons ban at a national level. And that's why it's important that the Supreme Court took a role in saying, and in Heller, in that case, uh, affirming the individual right to the Second Amendment, it's very telling that they said, but state and local governments can put reasonable restrictions. And now, after opening the door to state and local governments to actually confiscate or, or ban total weapons, they refuse to take the case about whether or not it's reasonable or not. I mean, that clearly shows that the feds, one, don't have the political capital to do gun confiscation themselves. Even the Democrats can't get caught. I agree. Them. So they're going to depend on the states, and only the most liberal states are going to get away with that. But it's a slow eroding process. It, it all points out, as you said, our movement is growing, Alex, in large part due to you, because you're the biggest uh, audience out there. I mean, a great many of the people who come to the World Affairs Brief come to it because of you. And I'm very appreciative of that, and so are other people. Uh, but it goes to the point that their solution to us is twofold. One, politically, they want to give us a compromised Republican to make us all go to sleep. And to the credit, fortunately, of the established or the conservative movement now, they're not buying it. It's almost like anything that the media puts forward, everyone says, it must be wrong. We've learned our lesson through all the betrayals before. I was about We're to say, aren't you and, and so many others, us together, because you've run some of the you know, major conservative organizations in the country, trying to make the Republican Party do its job decades ago. So it didn't come to fruition then, but it's coming later, thanks to you and Ron Paul and many others. I and mean, we're not just here to give credit. We're trying to point out to listeners, we're having an effect. Things just don't happen overnight. That aren't we successfully radicalizing the mainline Republican Party? I mean, as Rachel Maddow says. Yes, because we've, we've produced one... <sighs> 
uh, essay after another on betrayal. It's been betrayal and betrayal, and the message has finally gotten home. You can't trust anybody who gets to be Speaker of the House. Even Paul Ryan, they've thrown a, at us an uh, assuming conservative, but he's not going to be conservative. Anybody the establishment allows to be in that position, we know, is not going to do what we want to be done, what is right for the country in accordance with the Constitution. Uh, anybody who's allowed to be elected president isn't going to do the job, even Donald Trump. I mean, we talked about Trump. He's taking the correct positions. I'm still a little nervous, Alex, because of the bad positions he's taken and, and the un. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's just that I feel like I'm evil if I kind of sit on the sideline and let Hillary get in. I get physically nauseous, Joel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we have to have take a position for a principled uh, position. And right now, Donald Trump is taking the only position that is absolutely against the establishment. Hands down, he's just saying, everything the establishment does is wrong. We agree with that. The trouble is we can't depend on him, I think, what, if he were to get into office to do completely what's right. Uh, these types of things that he suggests uh, will get him crucified. Uh, I think he would be subject uh, of an assassination attempt if he got in. Well, the Secret Service does think that. They've, they've got him under constant guard. Yes, they do. So, But I still believe, uh, as I pointed out in this week's World Affairs Brief, they've begun to pull out the John McCain strategy on Chris Christie this week. Uh, a major New Hampshire newspaper uh, came out, the major newspaper, uh, paper there came out and endorsed Chris Christie. This is what they did to raise John McCain out of nothing status in 2008 to gain the presidency. I think they decided that Bush just isn't going to make it. He's not that exciting. Christie is a powerful speaker. He is capable of lying to a great extent. He is totally established. There are a lot of skeletons in his closet. The mere fact that they are pushing to get Christie to win in New Hampshire means this may be their newest tactic. Uh, Rubio's a little bit too young and cherubic. Uh, he doesn't have the gravitas that is necessary, I think, to engender, uh, uh, you know, uh, nationwide support. Chris Christie could probably do it. I don't trust him as far as I could throw him. But I'm just sending out a warning. It looks like that's where the new major establishment push is to overthrow Trump to try to get a win in the New Hampshire primary through this kind of endorsement. What do you think of Ted Cruz? Well, Ted Cruz is a solid conservative from way back from teenager years. There's no one who can deny his, his background. But that said, he's showing a lot of signs that he uh, admires the compromising that Ronald Reagan did. That's why I went to Washington originally as the chairman of Conservative National Committee, was to try to stop the Reagan compromises. I think Reagan also was a true conservative down deep inside. But when you want to be popular, when you want to be president too badly, as Mitt Romney did, you're going to bend over backwards to please as far as you can. And you're going to do a lot of damage because you're going to convince conservatives sure. that it is correct. Now, I think Ted Cruz's major problem with us as conservatives, he's totally bought into the, the attack Syria, the war agenda. He is not a neocon in terms of he's not a globalist. But like Romney, he took all of those positions because he thought, this is something I can get ahead with conservatives. I was about to say, Romney, why didn't he get back in? I mean, obviously, he would be a major contender right now, or have they just threatened him? It's a complic complicated story. They threatened him so badly before about not running in. He's reluctant to get back in. But remember, they don't really want anyone in the White House, Romney included, especially Romney, who they don't have dirt on. They've got to have control of that president so they can twist his arm as necessary. They, he has not been faithful to, unfaithful to his wife. And, uh, you know, they can't afford to have somebody in there. If Romney, I'll tell you, despite his compromises, if he'd seen the Benghazi stand-down down order going down, he would have stopped it. And they can't afford to have that. They, uh, so I don't think they pushed really hard to undo. They didn't certainly go to him and say all the threats don't mean anything. You can feel free to run, run now. They don't gain anything by bringing Romney in. They've got to have a controlled Republican who will do their bidding, um, especially in the hard cases. I think the next Republican that they intend could well take us into World War III, and they, that's one of the reasons they need a Republican, because Republicans at best create the atmosphere for a war or at least talk conservatives into a war. Well, Trump, they're going to love Trump saying he's a militarist. I mean, Trump, 
down. Really just said, does say whatever's coming off the top of his mind. I think that scares them at one level because they know that uh, he'd be hard to, you know, control. But I, I tell you, it's a real wild card. It is a, it is a real wild card on so many fronts. Speaking of Trump, here's a, a minute 10 compilation put together by Rob Dew, Buckley Hammond, and Rob Jacobson on what Trump basically really said, and now what's been spun out of it. Here's that clip. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. I'm a proud Muslim, but you don't have to share my faith to share my disgust. That was written by Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman, Huma Abedin, who penned the email in response to Donald Trump's recent proposition to impose a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. You know, it was the FBI director, the head of counterterrorism, and Homeland Security who all said under oath that they cannot properly vet people coming in from Syria. This is not a mission accomplished speech. We can and should do more to best enforce the security of our borders. The challenge we're all talking about is that we can only query against that which we have collected. And, and so if someone has never made a ripple in the pond in Syria in a way that would get their identity or their interests reflected in our database, we can query our database until the cows come home, but we're, we're not going to, we'll, there'll be nothing show up because we have no record on it. The FBI director has previously said, I think about a few years ago, that there were uh, people from terrorist countries who were assuming Hispanic names and uh, learning a few words of Spanish and coming in. The FBI director himself testified to that before Congress. So we know that this kind of thing has been going on. But let's take a look at Miss Abedin. Back in 2012, five Republicans sent a letter to the Department of Homeland Security noting that three of her family members had very close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. She was also intimately involved in Hillary Clinton's email scandal. And while she was at the State Department, Miss Abedin helped our country cozy up to Sheikh Yusuf al Khawardi, a promoter of jihadist terror. And one of her many accomplishments while at the State Department was helping destroy the country of Libya. I'm sure her and her Muslim Brotherhood friends are very proud of that achievement. Just imagine what she can do when her best pal, Hillary Clinton, gets into the White House. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com. Yeah, when they get the same hotel room, maybe. Uh, Joel Skousen is our guest. Going to break here in just a moment. Um, speaking of Hillary Clinton, what do you think her chances are for the White House? Uh, I don't think they're high at all, Alex, uh, and the establishment knows it. Uh, she's not popular with the left. That's why they're going after Bernie Sanders. Uh, she's got uh, skeletons a mile long in her closet, and, of course, they are protecting her in that regard. Uh, but she's got a lot of counter that she could dirt she could tell about the establishment if they betray her, and so they're not going to do that, and yet I don't think they're going to allow her to be elected. As I said, they want to give us a controlled Republican. Let me just say before we go to break, I didn't finish my thought on Putin. This week, he gave every indication, uh, Alex, that he is not going to rise to uh, Turkey's provocations. He even announced today no additional sanctions to Turkey over the threats in the Bosporus. So the West is not going to be able to get him to come up to a conventional war with the West, specifically because he's not ready and doesn't want to show as much as he of his possible of his capabilities as he has to. Well, I'm skipping this one break. This is so important. So continue on the Russia situation. Russia is being very restrained, extremely restrained, and the, you know they're in the major uh, in the process of a major building process. They need a blue water navy to prosecute a war with the West. Uh, they need all new weapon systems uh, in production level quantities. None of those are coming online until 2020, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So I can't imagine Russia rising to the bait uh, of the West until at least the beginning of the decade. And uh, so I think we're going to see a lot of posturing. One thing I will say, this is really turning into a proxy war between Russia and the United States. That's why the U.S. is using Turkey as the proxy, as well as ISIS. And, uh, you know, Russia is using the Syrian army, the, the Iranians and Hezbollah in Syria to execute their strategy. But the Russians are running the show now in Syria uh, very, very clearly and doing a lot of damage, uh, not only to ISIS, but mostly, of course, to the U.S.-backed rebels. They love sticking it to the globalists. They're really enjoying this. And uh, but you can expect either the U.S. or Israel to complicate situations such as U.S. attacking Syrian forces. 
Russia can't allow that to happen. They're going to have to. Uh, it may be that Russia, the U.S. itself, is trying to force Russia into a confrontation uh, over defending uh, Syrian troops. And Joel, uh, Joel, don't underestimate the recklessness of the Anglo-American establishment. I'm, I mean, they they could actually attack even Russian emplacements and say they didn't know it or deny it. I mean, it seems like the sky's the limit. Hopefully, that won't happen. But specifically on oil, they admit even in mainstream media now what we talked about two, three years ago. They want to bankrupt uh, Russia with lower oil prices. They want to bankrupt U.S. producers. They want to push us into this situation because Saudi Arabia can produce it and export it cheaper than anybody else with all their sweet reserves. For folks that don't know, it's basically gasoline out of the ground. Don't have to really refine it. If you look at all this, how can the American people uh, be informed that our government's siding with Saudi Arabia to bankrupt our industrial base? I mean, they either charge us $3, $4 a gallon, rip us off, or drive it down and charge us less than they should to create monopolies. Overall, if they want Russia to deploy this new military and attack us someday, why would they then be separately putting Russia in a depressionary spiral? Well, that still is a, a matter of controversy, whether or not this is, is deliberate. You've got to remember that the source of the oil glut is U.S. Uh, fracking here in the United States, and it's the only country where the oil industry is not controlled by the government. They can't shut off the tap. In other words, they, they created and opened up all of this new production, and you just can't shut it out. The government cannot tell these private oil companies to stop. Uh, so, you know, if, if Russia, for example, was really trying to support uh, the price of oil, they would be cutting production as well, and they're not doing it either. I think that's a reflection of the fact that we're hurting, just like Venezuela can't cut production because they're hurting so much. So I'm not sure this is a deliberate thing to bankrupt Russia, because you're right, that would go against the globalist agenda of wanting to, uh, you know, stop Russian military, uh, or to in increase Russian military production in, in favor of this next war. In fact, I think it's important to remember that even at the height or the low point of the Soviet economy, pre-1990, they were still in maximum arms production. So you don't really stop a communist country uh, you may stop their free market aspect by these uh, manipulations uh, or the lower oil prices, but you don't stop the fact that they can continue to print rubles and, and pay people. Sure. Do you buy the polls that Russian approval of Putin is at an all-time high? Absolutely. And that's part of the whole process of bringing a strong man back to Russia. You know, as you know my feelings, the, the fall of the Soviet Union was a carefully crafted deception. The communists are still in charge. and Putin is their man. There's also a new set of oligarchs that it replaced the original ones. They killed off Berezovsky and, uh, and exiled Guzinski and others. Uh, Khodorkovsky is, is under prosecution again in Russia. But there's a new set of oligarchs underlying Putin, and they are still running the communist show. Uh, but part of this process is to ra raise up Russian nationalism again. And remember that Russia gains by restraint in the Middle East because they're trying to help the U.S. create the image that the U.S. is the bully of the world, and so the more Russia acts with restraint, the more the world feels she would be justified when she does go after the West someday with nuclear weapons. I've asked most of the questions here, Joel Scowls, and other things on your radar we haven't gotten to. I think one of the things I want to point out, and I know you've covered this an awful lot about the uh, San Bernardino shootings, but my take on this is, is this. There was an article in today about who were the shooters. And, you know, for a, an organization that just had an interview this week with one of the live witnesses saying that uh, these were white guys, there were three of them, tall, muscular. I mean, these were obviously mercenaries that were in there doing the shooting. Uh, Far uh, Syed Farouk is not tall, neither is his wife. There's no way that they could have mistaken them. I don't believe that Farouk and Malik were, in fact, doing the shooting. I think they were part of it, just like the two arrestees in the marathon bombing, but they're meant to take the entire rap to shield the mercenaries that were in there doing the shooting. And this is the same thing in the Paris attack. You know, there was this Mercedes driving from restaurant to restaurant. Uh, witnesses said they were white guys, they were tall, strong, and muscular, they were not Muslims. And yet the media, and this is the key to a conspiracy, the media and the French government never put out that they were looking for a black Mercedes. They never put out any description from these witnesses. They simply buried it. 
CNN has never, ever mentioned that witness, that key witness. And by the way, we have one white lady that was very clear about three white men and then a separate black guy on another TV station saying he saw the exact same thing live that day. That's pretty credible when it's two different groups. And there's a drill going on down the street at the exact same time. Well, you know, I discount the drill aspects of these and including in the Paris attacks. The drill was important in 9-11 because it actually inhibited a response to 9-11. It had a purpose there. The drills in the previous month or two in San Bernardino didn't have any effect on the military response uh, to that drill. So I'm discounting that. But I'll tell you, there's something very real when no reporter at all in the mainstream media ever asked the police at any of these news conferences, what about the third suspect? And it comes out that this third suspect that had probably wasn't involved. These were just covers for the fact that they completely let escape the three tall white mercenary males who actually did the shooting. And you, they didn't walk or run away. I'm sure they went away in a vehicle. And the government isn't uh, you know, looking for them. So, Joel, stay yes. there, stay there. I want to come back to you five more minutes. I want to ask you this question. Clearly, it's a false flag they let them in to begin with and have opened the doors up, but why not stage a false flag where it's white Christians or Hispanic Christians or something? That fits the narrative better. Why stage a whole false flag and then have it be uh, at least one person who came here under false pretenses that blows up an Obama's narrative? Explain that to me. I mean, I agree. The evidence is there. It's just, well, then what's going on? Stay with us. Infowars.com forward slash show. David Knight's coming up too. Final segment that I'm running, then David Knight takes over. He's going to be playing this report where uh, Mark Dice talks to Democrats who agree they want a lower standard of living. They want Hillary to make them poor. This is how deranged they are. And then we're also going to play a report that, yes, Sharia law is being enforced in areas of the U.S. We actually have video of this. That's coming up and a lot more uh, with David Knight today. And there's a bunch of subjects he's going to be covering as well. Jill Skousen, you heard my question for folks that just joined us. Why didn't they run a false flag with just white Christians or white Republicans? Because that's the whole narrative. I mean, I agree. You've got the evidence of the shooters. You've got all this other stuff happening. Why not tailor it? Or was this done so we would accept it and believe it? and then accept gun control, accept more homeland security? Are they giving us false flags they think are more appetizing? It's a good question. The answer is a little bit complex, but let me first of all say that remember that these false flag black operations are going on in preparation months and months in advance, sometimes years in advance, and you can't always stop the process or dovetail or plan on this one. I mean, I'm sure they've got a dozen or half a dozen uh, black operations, gun control oriented operations already in the pipeline. And they have to wait it's, till the Patsy is ready to do what they're told and right. get in line. They, they cannot just wait. Now, remember that Farouk and Malik, they just he just got $26,000 paid into his bank account. Somebody paid him off to do something. And I think it was to be present at this. I think the government came in and put planted those weapons. The pipe bombs were inert, by the way. That's a sign of false flag. Uh, the fact that he couldn't have built that toy car remote bomb, he had no electronic event, means that there were other people involved, which they're not looking for. So this was clearly a false flag, but I think it's important to realize that they used, terrorism was sacrificed in here. It's true there's a disadvantage in having, in ginning up an anti-immigrant reaction to this. But remember, the key aspect was the ATF kept saying this was a legally acquired gun in California, the toughest of all gun states. This was completely tailored to make sure that we have to take down, that no gun control is safe for assault weapons. We have to ban them. That's right. we got to have more. That's And more, but not only that, I think they're saying that gun laws don't stop it. We've got to actually ban assault Thomas weapons. Gabe. That's why the New York Times came out for the ban. That's why Huffington Post came out for the actual conference. This is their time to declare it. You see the scripting. Yeah. And so... I think there are compromises they do. If they continue to throw white Christians at us, um, you know, it, it, it looks more like a government uh, operation. They're they're mixing up, the, and I don't think they can absolutely control. They've got, as I say, sure. They're testing too uh, when their real season of false flag comes. Uh, what the fish are biting on? Exactly. Yes. Um, now, as I say, I don't think it's going to come up to gun control. I. Th uh, 
you know, at best, the next thing they want is registration. And we could see, I want all assault weapons registered, uh, uh, but it's not going to get to confiscation, I can, I can assure everyone. Well, I agree. These people are scientists, and everything they do is beta test over and over again. You see it getting more intense, but it's beta testing into the future. But uh, they're just trying to shut down the economy with Obamacare and with welfare and all the rest of it to make us dependent. Uh, but uh, certainly an interesting time. Watch what's happening with Russia and Syria. That, for me, is the big hot button. Joel Skousen, thank you so much. you got about 60 seconds left. What else is going on over at World Affairs Brief right now? Well, let's see. Uh, we are uh, doing a lot to cover, you know, this election, especially how they're trying to take down Donald Trump without success. Um, and as I said, I, I'm focusing a lot on what uh, they're going to do to as an alternative to Bush, who isn't going to fly. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting to watch this uh, uh, primary process, because as I've said in the World Affairs Brief, there's over 1,200 delegates in the primary process that come from blue states, that is, liberal Republican states. They outnumber the conservative states, the red states, to, uh, by about oh, 54 to 46 percent, and 1,100 delegates for uh, red state Republicans. And that means if they keep people like uh, Rubio, who could take the Florida primary, Kasich, who could take the uh, Ohio Hold on, primary. finish this thought, and then we'll hand the baton to David Knight. He'll, he'll be with us and have comments. David Knight is going to be hosting the rest of the hour, but a lot of days we end up overlapping into the fourth hour, obviously. Some days I'll continue to host the fourth hour. Uh, but David's got a ton of news coming up. He'll be commenting on what Joel Skousen is discussing here in just a moment uh, as uh, we uh, finish up my part of the transmission. But we're talking about these purple states. They're not Democrat. They're not Republican. They're kind of these swing states uh, that are partially Republican. And Joel Skousen was getting into that being the key battle for who they end up nominating. Also, a question I have for Joel, because I saw it this morning. I didn't cover it. It was in my stack. But we're covering it now. Yeah, Donald Trump's thing about we may have to shut down parts of the Internet in some places to stop these people. And, again, that'll be used to say he's anti-free speech. I would ask him next time he's on, uh, what do you mean shut down the Internet? You mean in certain third-world war zones? Because, you know, that's a pretty bold statement. You know, Hillary's saying restrict the Internet, but she means our speech. And she admits she means our speech. So very, very dangerous, uh, some of these statements. Uh, Joel Skousen, finish up your purple state breakdown. Well, the important thing to realize is that if a person doesn't get an outright win in eight primaries, then it cannot be nominated uh, for president. So you're going to look to these uh, uh, people who, uh, like Rubio and Kasich, who might win in their individual, to hand their votes to someone that they want, like Christie, who I think is going to win a few, and that will beef him up enough to be able to be nominated for president. Somehow they're going to dump Trump. I can tell you that he's not going to be the nominee. So you're saying they're going to gerrymander it somehow? That's right. They're going to gerrymander this thing. And I think it's very important to watch this because I'll tell you, the Tea Party is going to be outraged when they see this happen. They're going to realize, boy, the system really is rigged and it doesn't look like... And that's when Obama would do a new Oklahoma City to blame us. Yes. I want to also mention before we close here that the National Front in France just won the latest regional election. They are now almost uh, as big as the other two major parties, and this really has the establishment worried in Europe. This goes to the thing that I've long predicted, is that the, as Helmut Kohl told the uh, Maastricht Conference in 1997, if you don't do this voluntarily, there's going to be war. The only other alternative to the EU is war. And so I think what he means, of course, as a globalist, is that we're going to give you a war to force you into a major global government and although I still think that this is a few years off, Alex, uh, it's coming as sure as we're living here today. Well, the new attorney general that wants to restrict free speech, and I totally agree with you, Joel Skousen, tipped her hand when she said her biggest fear is retaliatory strikes on Muslims. Well, A, I don't want anything to happen to random innocent Muslims as well, especially the ones being preyed on by the Wahhabists our government's been funding that have killed hundreds of thousands of them in Libya and Syria. But she tips her hand. The perfect thing out of this could be a false flag with a bunch of Muslim school kids or something mowed down by some right winger they're winding up right now or some patsy or maybe they go all the way with a false flag and then they can come in and come together and take our guns in the name of unity. I mean, I really see that 
And I really just feel uh, in the tea leaves, looking at all the pieces, that we're going into a false flag to blame the Patriots. Which have radar signatures, which have to be eavesdrop on. The U.S. Ha hasn't had any opportunity to get that information heretofore because Russia hasn't been in combat using those and hadn't been until they shot down one of the Su-24s that forced Russia's hand. And now, now Russia's brought in its top-of-the-line fighter planes as well. That's correct. So I don't... One of the interesting things that happened uh, this week as well is the U.S. for the first time attacked the Syrian army positions. Uh, in other words, uh, this is a major yes. escalation. This is a major escalation because Russia is going to be forced, perhaps, to defend the Syrian troops against Russian air or U.S. air attacks. They may have to, uh, you know, turn on their systems, uh, which is be enough usually to get the U.S. aircraft to turn around if you get locked on by an S-400 missile. Uh, that's, uh, you know, typically you turn tail and run. That coupled with Turkey publishing this photo of the Russian crew member supposedly holding a rocket launcher. Now, I want to say something's wrong with that. That looks like a provocation from Turkey because those ships passing through the Bosphorus are a mile to two miles away from shore. Can't see it. You can't see that. Uh, the pictures that they've showed of the Russian ships don't have that type of uh, um, structure that shows up in the picture. Um, in other words... That either was photoshopped or that was from a different uh, time or frame. I'm surprised surprised that the Russians haven't come out and uh, uh, and debunked that particular picture because it obviously is very very fraudulent or something that uh, you know they picked out of some other time frame. Well, Turkey's threatened to blow up their ships already. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't aiming, but it wouldn't be shoulder fired. What it'd be a larger well, onboard missile. He was taking orders from uh, the United States in, in uh, you know, facilitating the sale of ISIS uh, oil. Uh, everybody in, in Europe and the Middle East knows about the 9-11 controversy, that it was the uh, government operation from beginning to end. It's only the United States people who are continued, you know, to believe the, the official version, and that's only about 60% of the U.S. people believe the official version. So I think some 40% don't believe it. Though they don't, don't understand how bad it really is, it takes a lot of study, as you know, to understand the nuances of what happened in 9-11, how the U.S. pulled that off. Joel Skousen, I totally agree with what you just said, but you make the statement U.S. pulled it off. And in, in a way, that's true. But again, semantically, criminal elements and networks compartmentalized did because that's what the media does. They then say that we say the U.S. government did it. But I guess it was so high level and so widespread, you could argue either way. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, when you look at the cover-up of 9-11, it goes to the highest levels of government. Now, that isn't to say that George W. Bush knew a lot about what was going on. I think he knew that an operation was coming down, but this is a puppet sitting at the head, isn't making the operations, wasn't making the operation, just following orders. You stay and talk to the students at this elementary school. But Dick Cheney, of course, was fully knowledgeable. Here he is sitting in the White House Situation Room, allowing the airliner coming in to attack the Pentagon, I mean, this, he had to be fully 100% cognizant that this was a U.S. black operation. The young Air Force officer crying out, you know, this airplane's 10 miles out. Do the orders still stand? And he's panicking because the orders have to be, let it come in. Don't stop it. Don't shoot this airline down. And he's getting panicky. You know, no more Muslims, period, until we vetted them. Well, they just have him saying no more Muslims, period. Absolute and total ban. And they take it out of context. But I think this will only make Trump go up in the polls because I was somebody who was against the Iraq war. I was somebody who was against all this Islamophobia. I knew they were trying to destabilize the Middle East to put radicals in charge to wreck the place. I don't want to just randomly hate brown people or Muslims or Arabs. I mean, people know I've been a champion of, of not abusing these countries and these peoples. But now that they're bringing them in, now they're bringing in radicals, now that this is happening, and Joel Skousen's right, a lot of them are just guys looking for welfare and jobs and women. Still doesn't matter. They're the cover for the radicals, which will then be used to take our rights. And we've been proven that's coming. Uh, but Joel Skousen, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. So many other topics, so much more to cover. What about the question that Paul Craig Roberts asked, is war on the horizon, is it too late to stop it? 
What do you make of Ergun threatening to blow up Russian ships two days ago? And uh, what do you make of uh, the the uh, Turkish going into Iraq and, and Iraq saying it's an act of war and just their arrogance? Is Turkey doing this at the behest of NATO or is Turkey out of control or what's your intel? Well, NATO is not actually directing Turkey. The United States is directly uh, getting Turkey to do its bidding. Remember that the shoot down of the Russian Su-24 was at the direct uh, instigation of the United States. And I believe they wanted to do it in order to force Russia to bring in their top of the line air defense system so the U.S. could eavesdrop on them and see what kind of jamming capabilities they have. S-400. Yes, the S-400, as well as uh, their air-to-air -air, uh, jamming equipment and their air-to-air -air missiles, all of which, and you know, Dick Cheney whips his head around and said, of course the orders still stand. And of course, uh, you know, as Glenn Greenwood pointed out, the United States just honored Cheney with a bust of his uh, head uh, in the U.S. Congressional building. This man should be tried for war crimes as well as treason against the United States. But it clearly was a government operation from beginning to end, including the hiring of the terrorists. I mean, that's why they don't show the videos of the terrorists and the passengers getting on the airplane at the hijack. They refused to show the videos because it would show that the named hijackers weren't the ones getting on the airplane. There was another set of hijackers that they had trained in Saudi Arabia, I believe, on major airliners. Because as a pilot, I can tell you, you can't train on Cessnas and even know how to turn off the autopilot of one of those major jets. Impossible. And so there's no way that those named hijackers. So this is a cover up from beginning in, including the covering of Saudi Arabia's in, uh, role in training pilots, as well as uh, keeping a lot of the uh, phony hijackers on the list uh, in their Joel. apartments. We're going to break, but let me ask you this quick question. Is Saudi Arabia arguably the most evil country in the world? No, we are. We are. I mean, they're just puppets to the United States. We are covering for them. That makes us culpable for so much of what goes on in the world. What we allow and we, you know, help Saudi Arabia. We promise to cover their, their pedophilia. I mean, these people are not Muslims. They're just corrupt individuals pretending to be Muslims. I agree, sir. Stay right there. We're going to come back and get into more geopolitics with Joel Scowls and the World Affairs Brief. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars. By the way, coming up in the next segment, I'm going to play the clip again uh, from the AP speech, the speech he gave yesterday where the AP just played the clip where he said. Going a little too far. If he's saying ban them until you have a proper vetting process, then that's every bit, every bit correct. Um, it's impossible, however, for to trust our government to run the vetting process because obviously they created ISIS. Uh, if they wanted to have a lot of ISIS people come in, they would certainly let them and say that they were vetted, and uh, they're not going to they're not going to do that. Now, relative, I have a little bit different take relative to the number of people, uh, young Muslim military age people coming in. My sources tell me. Uh, in interviewing a lot of these people in Europe and in the Middle East. These are conscription-age military people. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, by the, what you're wrong, there is proof that some of these people who have been jihadists are in the group. But the majority, it appears, are people running away from conscription, running away from having to be forced into the military as terrorists uh, in any number of the dozen uh, you know, jihadist groups in there. And they, they really aren't particularly religious. In fact, a lot of them are running away from Muslim uh, or from Islam. That's why they get so deeply involved in the pornography and the other corruptive things of the West once they get there. That's why they get involved with rape. These people are simply young men who don't want to fight, who don't uh, are tired of it and want uh, you know the, the good life uh, in, in, in the Western countries, although they do hate the United States. Everyone in the Middle East has been trained to hate the United States because of our constant intervention there. You know, everybody in the world knows about the relationship between Turkey and ISIS uh, uh, and the United States backing Turkey and, and covering for Turkey's uh, collaboration with ISIS. And that's because, obviously, Turkey... Hey there, explain when we come back, but they're definitely playing with fire. This is unprecedented. We're going to come back on that front. And also, global government itself, the big Paris conference, we'll talk about that. The Economy, Oil Prices with Joel Scowls and WorldAffairsBrief.com. I'm with InfoWars.com. They don't want you to check these sites out, folks. Send the links out to friend and family. As I went to break, I just pointed out something that I should point out a lot more. 
White House run Media Matters memos got leaked five years ago where they said all independent libertarian patriot based media will needs to be infiltrated and destroyed. Now I want to explain to you separately, we have been partially infiltrated before like a movie. I mean, I get followed around home sometimes, you name it. I'm not going to get into it all, but it's like a movie. Can you imagine what it's like for other people? This is real. Okay. And you need to understand, we're having a big effect. They don't like us. I like to have lots of company in this fight. That's why I have all these other great guests on there doing just as good a job as I am or better. But you have the real power. You are why they're scared of InfoWars, because we have millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of viewers and listeners. And again, when you've got billions of views on YouTube, when you've got, this weekend I shot three videos Together, they had over two million, no, two and a half million views. Those were live, unedited, where instantly there's 50,000 watching within a minute. And then when, by the end of the video, there's 100,000 watching. And then 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800 in one video had 1.3 million views within a day. Now, do you think the establishment likes that? No, they are scared to death because it's not a fat lady on a treadmill getting that many videos. It's not cats playing. It's not French Bulldogs. It's not Jay-Z. It's Alex Jones. It's people like Joel Skousen. <sighs> Let me tell you, when we have a video, our average video gets about 50,000 views. We put out about 40 videos a day. 40, 50,000 people watching a political video is a victory. So I'm not bragging. I'm saying this, I can feel the wings of doom flapping around spiritually. I mean, I know I'm in danger. And I'm just asking for your prayers, your support, but also prayers for other people that are taking action because they've once said there are no atheists in foxholes. I forget who said that, but let me tell you, there aren't. This stuff is real. You can see it. And as it all gets announced, as world government gets announced, as all this evil comes out in the open the next few years, what do you think is going to happen to the credibility of a World Affairs Brief, a World Net Daily, a Drudge Report.com, an InfoWars, and the hundreds of criminal elements and networks compartmentalized did because that's what the media does. They then say that we say the U.S. government did it. But I guess it was so high level and so widespread, you could argue either way. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah. When you look at the cover-up of 9-11, it goes to the highest levels of government. Now, that isn't to say that George W. Bush knew a lot about what was going on. I think he knew that an operation was coming down, but this is a puppet sitting at the head isn't making the operations, wasn't making the operation, just following orders. You stay and talk to the students at this elementary school. But Dick Cheney, of course, was fully knowledgeable. Here he is sitting in the White House Situation Room, allowing the airliner coming in to attack the Pentagon. I mean, this he had to be fully 100% cognizant that this was a U.S. black operation. The young Air Force officer crying out, that, you know, this airplane's 10 miles out. Do the orders still stand? And he's panicking because the orders have to be, let it come in. Don't stop it. Don't shoot this airline down. And he's getting panicky. And, you know, Dick Cheney whips his head around and said, of course, the orders still stand. And, of course, uh, you know, as Glenn Greenwood pointed out, the United States just honored Cheney with a bust of his uh, head uh, in the U.S. Congressional Building. This man should be tried for war crimes as well as treason against the United States. But it clearly was a government operation from beginning to end, including the hiring of the terrorists. I mean, that's why they don't show the videos of the terrorists and the passengers getting on the airplane of the hijack. They refuse to show the videos because it would show that the named hijackers weren't the ones getting on the airplane. There was another set of hijackers that they had trained in Saudi Arabia, I believe, on major airliners. Because as a pilot, I can tell you, you can't train on Cessnas and even know how to turn off the autopilot of one of those major jets. Impossible. And so there's no way that those named hijackers... So this is a cover-up from beginning to end, including the covering of Saudi Arabia's in, uh, role in training pilots as well as uh, keeping a lot of the uh, phony hijackers on the list uh, in their Joel, apartments. We're going to break, but uh, let me ask you this quick question. Is Saudi Arabia arguably the most evil country in the world? No, we are. We are. I mean, they're just puppets to the United States. We are covering for them. That makes us culpable for so much of what goes on in the world, what we allow and we, you know, 
help Saudi Arabia. We promise to cover their, their pedophilia. I mean, these people are not Muslims. They're just corrupt individuals pretending to be Muslims. I agree, uh, sir. Stay right there. We're going to come back and get into more geopolitics with Joel Scows and the World Affairs Brief. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars. By the way, coming up in the next segment, I'm going to play the clip again uh, from the AP speech, the speech he gave yesterday where the AP just played the clip where he said, you know, no more Muslims, period, until we vetted them. Well, they just have him saying no more Muslims, period, absolute and total ban. And they take it out of context. But I think this will only make Trump go up in the polls because I was somebody who was against the Iraq war. I was somebody who was against all this Islamophobia. I knew they were trying to destabilize the Middle East to put radicals in charge to wreck the place. I don't want to just randomly hate brown people or Muslims or Arabs. I mean, people know I've been a champion of, of not abusing these countries and these peoples. But now that they're bringing them in, now they're bringing in radicals, now that this is happening, and Joel Skousen's right, a lot of them are just guys looking for welfare and jobs and women. Still doesn't matter. They're the cover for the radicals, which will then be used to take our rights. And we've been proven that's coming. Uh, but Joel Skousen, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. So many other topics, so much more to cover. What about the question that Paul Craig Roberts asked? Is war on the horizon? Is it too late to stop it? What do you make of Ergun threatening to blow up Russian ships two days ago? And uh, what do you make of uh, the the uh, Turkish going into Iraq and, and Iraq saying it's an act of war and just their arrogance? Is Turkey doing this at the behest of NATO or is Turkey out of control? Or what's your intel? Well, NATO is not actually directing Turkey. The United States is directly uh, getting Turkey to do its bidding. Remember that the shootdown of the Russian Su-24 was at the direct uh, instigation of the United States, and I believe they wanted to do it in order to force Russia to bring in their top-of-the-line air defense system so the U.S. could eavesdrop on them and see what kind of jamming capabilities they have. S-400. Yes, the S-400, as well as uh, their air-to-air -air, uh, jamming equipment and their air-to-air -air missiles, all of which have radar signatures, which have to be eavesdrop on. The U.S. Ha hasn't had any opportunity to get that information heretofore because Russia hasn't been in combat using those and hadn't been until they shot down one of the Su-24s that forced Russia's hand. And now, now Russia's brought in its top-of-the-line fighter planes as well. That's correct. So I don't. One of the interesting things that happened uh, this week as well is the U.S. for the first time attacked the Syrian army positions. Uh, in other words, uh, this is a major escalation. This is a major escalation. Going a little too far. If he's saying ban them until you have a proper vetting process, then that's every bit every bit correct. Uh, it's impossible, however, for to trust our government to run the vetting process, because obviously they created ISIS. Uh, if they wanted to have a lot of ISIS people come in, they would certainly let them and say that they were vetted, and uh, they're not going to they're not going to do that. Now, relative, I have a little bit different take relative to the number of people, uh, young Muslim military age people coming in. My sources tell me. Uh, in interviewing a lot of these people in Europe and in the Middle East. These are conscription-age military people. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, by the, what you're wrong, there is proof that some of these people who have been jihadists are in the group. But the majority, it appears, are people running away from conscription, running away from having to be forced into the military as terrorists uh, in any number of the dozen uh, you know, jihadist groups in there. And they, they really aren't particularly religious. In fact, a lot of them are running away from Muslim uh, or from Islam. That's why they get so deeply involved in the pornography and the other corruptive things of the West once they get there. That's why they get involved with rape. These people are simply young men who don't want to fight, who don't uh, are tired of it and want uh, you know the, the good life uh, in, in, in the Western countries. Although they do hate the United States. Everyone in the Middle East has been trained to hate the United States because of our constant intervention there. You know, everybody in the world knows about the relationship between Turkey and ISIS uh, uh, and the United States backing Turkey and, and covering for Turkey's uh, collaboration with ISIS. And that's because, obviously, Turkey's taking orders from uh, the United States in, in uh, you know, facilitating the sale of ISIS uh, oil. 
uh, everybody in, in Europe and the Middle East knows about the 9-11 controversy, that it was the uh, government operation from beginning to end. It's only the United States people who are continued, you know, to believe the, the, the official version. And that's only about 60 percent of the U.S. people believe the official version. So I think some 40 percent don't believe it, though they don't, don't understand how bad it really is. It takes a lot of study, as you know, to understand the nuances of what happened in 9-11, how the U.S. pulled that off. Joel Skousen, I totally agree with what you just said, but you make the statement U.S. pulled it off. And in, in a way, that's true. But again, semantically. Because Russia is going to be forced, perhaps, to defend the Syrian troops against Russian air, or U.S. air attacks. They may have to, uh, you know, turn on their systems, uh, which is be enough usually to get the U.S. aircraft to turn around if you get locked on by an S-400 missile. Uh, that's, uh, you know, typically you turn tail and run. That coupled with Turkey publishing this photo of the Russian crew member supposedly holding a rocket launcher. Now, I want to say something's wrong with that. That looks like a provocation from Turkey because those ships passing through the Bosphorus are a mile to two miles away from shore. Can't see it. You can't see that. Uh, the pictures that they've showed of the Russian ships don't have that type of... Uh, um, structure that shows up in the picture. Um, in other words, that either was photoshopped or that was from a different uh, time or frame. I'm surprised surprised that the Russians haven't come out and uh, and debunked that particular picture because it obviously is very very fraudulent or something that uh, you know they picked out of some other time frame. Well, Turkey's threatened to blow up their ships already. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't aiming, but it wouldn't be shoulder fired. Would it? It'd be a Larger well, onboard missile. You're talking about a mile or two away. You don't use a shoulder-fired, uh, you know, bazooka-type, uh, you know, cannon to do that. You've got all kinds of weapons on ships to do those types of things. So this, there's something wrong with that story. Uh, either it means that the U.S. is trying to provoke additional reactions, not because— and I disagree with Paul Craig Roberts. I don't think this is meant to provoke World War III. As I pointed out on Sunday on your show— the U.S. isn't going to gain anything in terms of getting the world to join a militarized global government by by creating a, a conventional war with Russia. Uh, it just doesn't do it. Uh, the U.S. is sitting there managing the conventional war. Everyone's sitting on the sideline cheering the U.S. on and say, yeah, go to it. But you see, the U.S. really wants to set us up for a nuclear confrontation with Russia and China where our military gets taken down. That and that alone is what drives people into accepting their solution that we need a military global government to fight this war because the U.S. has been decapitated, at least our military has. So I think it's still too, uh, too premature for a third world war. But I'll tell you, the, the globalists are doing something in there to provoke uh, you know, Russia to uh, escalate tensions with, with uh, Turkey. Now, on Putin's part, it's very obvious. Well, stay there. Stay